Oswald Theodore Avery, known to his students in New York as the Professor, was born in Halifax on the 21st of October, 1877. His early life gave no indication of his future career. He was preparing to get into divinity. And one, if one looks back into his grades, one finds he scored the highest marks in public speaking. He didn't have a single subject of science in his courses, except a few, those were compulsory. And then suddenly in 1890, he decided that divinity or being a preacher was not his job. And probably the atmosphere at Colgate, where he was studying, was a strange meeting point of, shall I say, the era of enlightenment and the era of orthodox religious teaching. And I think the era of enlightenment on over. And he suddenly, he changed his life and went into medicine. Avery received his MD from Columbia in 1904, but after three years of medical practice in New York, he turned to research, settling at New York's Rockefeller Institute in 1913. Following military service during World War I, he began to concentrate on what would become his life's work, the study of pneumococcus, the bacterium that causes pneumonia, and the strange transformations that took place between its different types. After decades of meticulous research, Avery and his co-authors, Colin McLeod and Macklin McCarty, were able to announce that the transformations were caused by the transmission of genetic material. That material was deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. Avery and his colleagues had discovered the stuff of life. Some discoveries are limited in time. They leave within the construct of current ideas. There are other ideas which shake up the construct, shape up the existing gospels, and shows those gospels might merely be gospels, but not the truth. And if one does that, one has to pay a price. They pay a price because one is telling others that what you believed was wrong. And that's the price that Copernicus paid, Galileo Galileo paid. And that's the price probably also also everything. Because in the beginning, nobody believed him. Uh, Avery's paper went through the work that they had done with enormous care. But right at the end, uh, he gave out the gratuitous comment, of course, uh, the transformation that we have seen of from one species of bacteria to an, uh, one form of bacteria to another form of bacteria, maybe it was some other contaminant which we missed. So he was so modest about it, having gone to enormous lengths to rule out all other possible contaminants, he still left that door open. The skepticism about his momentous discovery didn't last long. Once Avery had pointed the way, many researchers followed his lead. Their efforts culminated in Watson and Crick's famous 1953 paper describing the structure of DNA. But their work, and that of those who followed them, would not have been possible without Oswald Avery. His discovery was a foundation stone of modern genetics, modern uh, molecular biology, and he's a Canadian and should be recognized. Oswald Avery died in 1955 without receiving the Nobel Prize he so richly deserved. But there is no doubt that it's his legacy that will help define the new millennium.
And that, that is why I, not only I, many historians of science think that 20th century belonged to three scientists. And they are, or they were, Einstein, Max Planck, and Osser.